y'all. I say it. What's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This your boy, Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before I get going on our video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share the video, turn on your notifications, and go follow me on Twitter, AKO Boxing 86 TV. If you got a breakdown or a prediction you'd like me to do for you, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. And don't forget about our live shows. We live every Wednesday and Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm also live every Sunday morning with the singing OG KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. But let's get it popping. Let's get into our video. And today, we got some more Javante Davis and Devin Haney back and forth. And I love it when these two fighters go at it because it's funny. And the fans from both sides are very, very passionate. Me as a fan of both. I do rock heavier with Tank Davis, though, but me as a fan of both, it's always fun to talk about a topic like this. But this was going on, man. Devin Haney was doing an interview with Behind the Gloves, and they asked him about, you know, Tank, Loma, all that. He said, look, we all know Tank isn't going to fight nobody. He doesn't want to fight nobody. It's been like that for a while now, so the more realistic fight is Lomachenko. Javante Davis got wind of this on Twitter. He says, won't let him promote that weak-ass fight off me. Going at, back at Devin Haney, feeling as though it's Devin Haney. Fight week, Devin Haney got a fight against um, George Cambosos on Saturday here in the States. It's going to be on Sunday over there in Australia where they're fighting at. He just feel like Devin Haney bringing up his name, talking shit about him and stuff to try to drum up interest for his fight. So they both kind of, you know, take a little, ah, little jab, not even really a hook, not an uppercut, just a little, ah, little jab at each other and shit. And you know, I ain't got no issue with it. I ain't got no issue with it, but a couple of things to word, like, in my opinion, neither one of them got a good resume to me. Like, when you talk about how they fought the best or how they fought top level competition, I think Tanks fought a little bit better competition than Devin Haney, but. I mean, neither one of them, like, ain't neither one of them fought Loma. Neither one of them fought Tia Fimo. Neither one of them fought Ryan Garcia. Young guns like Frank Martin. Young guns like, uh, shit. Uh, Keyshawn Davis, former champions that have now kind of fallen off a little bit, like Richard Comey. Contenders that have fought top-level competition, like Nakatani. Like, ain't neither one of them. Really fought nobody, bro. The real shit. Now, the retort from Devin Haney's fans as well, Cambosos, can, I mean, all right, bro. Even a, even a broke clock is, is wrong, you know, twice a day, bro. Like, he beat Tiafimo Lopez. He caught Tiafimo in Tiafimo's worst performance of his career and George Cambosos' best performance of his career, and he still won a split decision and almost got knocked down in the 10th round. People forget that George Cambosos also went life and death with Mickey Bay when Mickey Bay was extremely inactive and in his mid-30s. People forget that, that George Cambosos also barely won a split decision against a Lee Selby that was well past his prime. So, like, neither one of these guys, Tank Davis, I mean, Uriokas Gamboa, way past his prime. Leo Santa Cruz, much smaller, you know, coming up from featherweight. Four-division champion, Jorge Linares, four-division champion, but Devin couldn't even get Linares out of there after Lenore has been knocked out four or five times in his career. So, like, neither one of these guys, you can see the talent. You can see how great they potentially could be. But until we see them fight someone on the level of each other, then I would say neither one of their resumes is nothing to write home about. Now, what people will say to me, what Devin Haney fans will say to me, well, Devin shows that he wants to smoke more because you hear him talk. You hear his dad talk. You see the move that they made over to Cambosos um, and, and, and and getting that fight done. Um, and, and, and you see it. You know what I mean? You see that he is calling for the smoke. So he does have the right attitude. If you want to have an argument that you like Devin Haney's attitude better than that of Javante Tank Davis, I would tend to agree with you. But if your argument is that Devin Haney, has, his actions, like has he actually fought better competition, then Javante Tank Davis, they about the same. I slightly lean towards Tank because I think Eastside Pitbull Cruz is right there with somebody like George Cambosos. I think that Leo that um, Leo Santa Cruz is better than Jorge Linares when Tank Davis fought. 
They both fought Uriokas Gamboa. You know what I'm saying? I think Mario Barrios is right there with somebody like a Jose D, uh, Jojo Diaz, bro. Like, I, I think that they battle on the same level. Because Jojo Diaz, he might have been a world champion on lost to, to Gary Russell Jr., but Jojo Diaz was coming up from featherweight, bro. He was a featherweight who couldn't punch down at that weight class. And was well, was undersized drastically against Devin Haney. Whereas Mario Barrios was bigger than Tank Davis and stronger than Tank Davis and longer. So, I mean, they each, I mean, it's half a dozen, six to other. Like, it's the same shit to me, bro, until they fight each other or fight other top fighters. But um, what Devin Haney said about the more realistic fight is Lomachenko and kind of put it in a way, let me get read the exact quote real quick. He doesn't want to fight nobody. It's been like that for a while now, so the more realistic fight is Lomachenko. The more realistic fight for Devin Haney is not Vasily Lomachenko because Tank Davis don't want to fight nobody. And I think that's where Tank kind of took offense to it. Like, bro, you ain't using your, your fight to promote me. You ain't using me to promote that weak-ass fight, bro. Because the way that Devin worded his diehard fans and people that really rock with Devin will have you believe that the only reason Devin Haney is fighting Vasily Lomachenko next if that fight has happened is because Tank Davis is ducking. That's where the disconnect be with me and a lot of them, right? That's where I go right and they go left. That's where I go up and they ass go down because it's like, to me, it's much more likely, and in my opinion, the reason that Lomachenko is a much more realistic fight is because that is the best business that top rank can do. Because top rank wants to continue to build they're stable at 135 pounds. Shakur just moved up to that weight class. Lomachenko will be at 135 probably for the rest of his career. Keyshawn Davis is on his way up. Abdullah Mason, the young phenom, is on his way up. They got guys at 130 like Oscar Valdez that will be on their way up. So top rank wants to keep control of those belts. It is not in their best interest from a business standpoint to put Devin Haney in a fight with Javante Tank Davis to where whether Devin wins the belts are gone because this is this third fight will be Devin's last fight on top rank. Or if Tank Davis beats Devin, then those belts are still gone. So why, would you, if you Bob Aram, would you put Devin Haney in a fight where you know if he lose, the belts are going to another promotional company? Or if he wins, the belts will be controlled by another promotional company. You want to give yourself at least a 50% shot. So you're going to put Devin Haney in there with one of your in-house fighters to where you got a chance to keep control of those belts to keep making championship-level fights at the lightweight division. So that's why I believe that Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko is much more likely than Javante Davis and, and Devin Haney. I just do, bro. Like, and what we're noticing, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, it's going to be a Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia video because I watched an interview for Steven Espinosa. But what we're noticing is that more and more promoters, networks, fans even, are unwilling to accept the business of boxing as it pertains to A side, B side. And like more and more people are like, yeah, let's just do a co-promotional. Yeah, let's just, let's just like, shoot, we got to do co-promotional. The network that my guy fights on, he, we need to be a part of it. When in reality, if you Devin Haney for as, as great of an accomplishment being the youngest undisputed champion is, if you Bob Arum, for as great as having the undisputed champion Devin Haney under your banner, if you ESPN, for as great as having the undisputed champion Devin Haney fighting on your network, for as great as all of that is, bro, if you wanted to make the Devin Haney fight, you'd have to let him go over there to Showtime. And right now, it seems like networks and promoters are balking at that idea, and they don't want to send their fighters over to other platforms to fight on even knowing that their fighter is the clear B-side in the negotiation. But people don't want to look at it from their perspective. They say somebody like a Tank Davis or Earl Spence or even Canelo if he had a network or Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. People will say that, well, those guys got to compromise. Forgetting the fact that someone like Steven Espinosa, Floyd Mayweather, Leonard Elby, Al Heyman, they built Tank into this, this star to where you can charge people to watch him fight both live in, in, in person and you pay to watch him fight on TV. 
So why should they have to capitulate for a guy that hasn't been built to that level yet? If you want to fight somebody like a Tank Davis, you got to take your ass to where he at to fight him, bro. Otherwise, you don't really want the fight. Like, I don't understand why some some of the same people that understand this concept when it comes to someone like Earl Spence, yo, Bud, if Bud want to fight Earl, he got to go holler at the PBC. If Bud want to fight Earl, he got to go holler at the, at the PBC. Those same people will tell you that Tank Davis and Devin Haney should be a co-promotional deal. That both ESPN and Showtime can broadcast it. The fight is big enough for that. They'll be the same people that tell you Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia, and we're going to get into that video, it should be the zone in Showtime. They'll tell you that. What's the difference? Tank is just as much, Tank is more of an A-side to Devin Haney than Earl Spence is to Terrence Bud Crawford. Yeah, yeah. Tank Davis is more of an A-side to Devin Haney than Earl Spence is to Terrence Crawford. At least Terrence Crawford done had three pay-per-views. He got some pay-per-view revenue that he bought to the table. Devin Haney ain't got none. Ryan Garcia ain't got none. But yet still people were saying that Tank Davis needs to go to where they at to make fights. Now they need to come to say him, especially if you're calling his name and you're saying you want him, you got to go to where the champion is. By champion, I mean the A-side person. Devin Haney is the only champion at 135 pounds. Let me say the man. If you want to fight the man, if you want to fight the guy that is the most popular, if you want to fight the guy that, that generates the most revenue, you got to go to where he at. You got to go to where he at, bro. But Devin Haney and Tank Davis talking that shit, I'm all for it. Um, I, I, I agree with both of them going at each other. No issues there. I would just tell Devin and his fans the reason that Lomachenko is much more realistic than Tank Davis is not because Tank don't fight nobody. It's not because Tank is scared of Devin. It's because Bob Arum wants Lomachenko to get that shot. It's because Lomachenko is an in-house fighter for ESPN in the top rank, and they are looking to do that first from a business perspective before they let Devin Haney's last fight under contract with them be against the outsider where they don't get to have all of the revenue and where they don't at least get the opportunity to get those belts back in under top rank's control. That's my belief, and that's my opinion, and that's my take. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Comment down below. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the videos. Turn on your notifications and go over there on Twitter and follow me on Twitter at KOBoxing86TV. Breakdowns and predictions, please reach out to my email, knockoutboxing 86 at yahoo.com. I appreciate y'all watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace out, y'all.